Happy lunch hour, guys. All right. Uh, so as I'm working here, thinking about some stuff and kind of putting puzzle pieces together, you know, things I do. If you saw this morning, you know, producer price indexes came down. In CPI yesterday came down. Okay, inflation's now the official inflation inflation numbers at five point six percent. Okay, these are good things. Not that. 5.6 is anything good because when Biden took office in Trump's last month as presidency, inflation was running at 1.9%. So, yes, Joe, you're fixing the problem that you caused. So, how is he doing that? There's the question, okay? I'm going to give you this. What piqued my curiosity at this all of a sudden was gold and silver are on another tear again today. Okay, gold's up about 25 bucks, pushing. I mean, we're within $20 of all time highs, guys. Okay, you know, silver's up one and a half percent, you know, pushing $26. We haven't seen that in about a year. Okay, so I'm wondering, I'm like, okay, inflation's coming down. Not that we're seeing it because food prices still went up six tenths of a percent officially last month. All right, so you know, the things that we Joe average by that's coming down the PPI you know the the bigger things you know, that's or I'm sorry the things we buy is going up the things that the elites and the rich buy those have a tendency to go down hmm. interesting huh but so I was looking at this and if you pay attention to the dollar index the dollar index the dollar is getting weaker and weaker we are now down right now as I'm recording this at 100.73 okay we haven't seen a flat 100 number in a long time. Okay. So the dollar's getting weaker. But all this, the Fed raising rates, the Fed raising rates, and the way it's put out to the American public is, well, we're doing this because we need to reduce inflation. Is that the big lie? Is that what they're telling the people to make us accept it because, oh my God, none of us want to see inflation. So we'll deal with this, right? And then I started looking at something here. So I want, I want to put this to you here. Let's say, for example, you have some money that you want to invest somewhere. And let's just say you're very conservative. You want to put this in CDs, all right? It's about as simple as you can get. Would you go and put the money in a CD where the bank pays 5%? Or would you be better off putting it at 4% or 3% or 1.5%? Where would you put your money? Okay. You'd probably put it in a place that was paying 5%, right? So would I. Just makes sense. I want to make more money. If I'm going to tie up my money, I want to make more money on it. So now look at what the U.S. government is doing. They're raising the Fed funds rate. The Fed funds rate is the overnight bank-to-bank -bank rate, but it basically is that, that what the Fed's moving isn't directly infected, affects us. It indirectly affects us. It now tells you what the banks are going to pay you in, not the specific number, but it, it indicates what the banks are going to pay you in interest or for CDs. It indicates what you're going to pay for a mortgage or for a credit card or a car loan or whatever it would be, all right? So if you look around the world right now, the West, basically the whole world, okay? The United States Fed fund rate right now is sitting at 5%. And there's speculation that at the next Fed meeting at the beginning of May, they might raise another quarter of a basis point. If you're another country, if you're China, Japan, England, whatever, and you want to buy, you know, invest somewhere, put your money somewhere, where would you put it? You would put it in the country, in you know, in treasuries or whatever, in whatever debt instrument you can find that pays you the best return. Now. Let me ask you this. If we look around 
at the, the major countries around the world. Tell me if you would invest your money in Russia right now. Okay. Would you invest your money in South Africa right now? Would you invest your money in Brazil right now? With all the things going on in those countries, would you invest your money there? Those are the only central banks that have a higher interest rate than the U.S. Fed. Okay, Russia at seven and a half, South Africa at six and a half, and Brazil at thirteen and three quarters. Okay, you can tell which country's the next to fall. If you look at the Western world, okay, the civilized world, <laughs> for the most part, okay, mind you. The Fed rates are at 5%. European Central Bank is at 3.5%. The Bank of England is at 4 and a quarter. <clears throat> the Swiss National, National Bank is at 1.5%. The uh, Bank of Canada is at 4.5%. Australia is at 36 uh, New Zealand is at 5 and a quarter. The Bank of Japan is at minus 0.1%. Okay. If you're going to invest your money, where would you put it? you'd put it in the United States because that's where you're going to get the safest return. I mean, unless you consider Russia, South Africa, or Brazil a safe place to put your money, that's where you're going to get the best return and the safest return. As an investor, that makes sense. But what if you need to borrow money? That's what I'm saying. This, this is the big lie. Is the reason that Jerome Powell, with, of course walking orders, marching orders from the White House is raising rates is because the U.S. needs to make it more attractive for other countries to loan us money because we've got so much problem with our economy that we need money. So, you know, it's kind of like buying junk bonds, you know. The, re the reason that people buy junk bonds, they pay a higher return, but they also come with more risk. You know, those companies need to entice investors to put money in their country or into their company. <clears throat> okay, so they've got to pay more. Is that what the U.S. is doing? Is that what the Biden administration is doing? And I don't care what you say, the Federal Reserve is a private entity. Yes, it is. I agree with you there. On paper, if you don't think it's completely controlled by politicians, I disagree with you. Okay. You know, the Fed the Fed does what the administration wants them to. So is the Biden administration panicking so much, going, Oh my God, we've spent all this money we don't have. We need to rob Peter to pay Paul. We need to borrow more money to pay off what we have, you know. A Ponzi scheme. Gee, the government involved in a Ponzi scheme? No, say it wouldn't happen. I don't know, Social Security comes to mind. Okay. We need to borrow money from one country so we can pay our interest to another country and keep us going until we croak. And the hell with it, we'll just pass it on to our kids. That's what I think is going on. I think the whole, we're trying to fight inflation is a charade. I think the, the real deal is... The, the government is trying to entice the Chinas, the Japans, the rest of the world to invest their dollars here so the Democrats have working capital to continue pushing their ridiculous ideas. And why do I say that? Because in an environment like this, gold and silver should not be going up at I think gold's up something like 12% this year, guys. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, silver's up something like 8% a month. I mean, these are not investments that you make to get rich. You know, these are not investments that you make to go, hey, look, honey, you know, we made 12%. I mean, on average, since the Great Depression, the stock market returns 7% a year, okay? That's, that's what your average return of the stock market is. You don't get 11% and a quarter on gold. Why are people buying it? Why are countries buying it? Because everybody sees the house of cards is collapsing. And I think we are being lied to by the Fed about why they are raising rates. This is borrowing more from Peter to pay Paul. And this is to keep them going 
as long as they can because they know their tenure is hopefully shortly done, you know, and they know it. It's like, oh my God, we've, we've collapsed this so far. We can't do any more. If we can just completely bankrupt the country, then maybe, then maybe we can move forward with our ideas. Once everybody goes, oh my God, the country is bankrupt. The dollar is getting weaker. Okay. We've borrowed so much money. We, I mean, we already know they can never pay it back. Is that the plan? Are they trying to completely bankrupt the country after they have borrowed so much money to implement all of these insane ideas that once we're at that point, we're at a point of no return because the next president, who might even be Trump, but anybody that runs against Biden should win. Trump, anybody, okay? That, if this country votes for for Biden again after everything he's done in the last two years, you go back to Reagan's statement: "Are you better off for uh, better off now, or how you were four years ago?" Anybody that says I'm better off now than I was in 2020 is smoking some real good stuff. Let's put it that way. But I have a tendency to believe this is what's going on: that the Pain is just beginning to start. We're just starting to feel it. Because if we've got to keep borrowing money, and now, we, now we've got to start paying through the nose to do it, because that's the only way we can get it, that's the signal that a company or a country is about dead. Well, I would.